I am trying to help your mother out by making breakfast. Oh, you're straining the lumps out of the oatmeal, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't forget, she makes my lunch, too. Jamie, I only have two hands. Oh! Oh! Make that one hand. Oh. <laughs> Jamie, why don't you eat at the school cafeteria today, all right? Cafeteria food? <laughs> well, if you feel that way, why don't you make it yourself? All the stuff is right there. You're right, Dad. When Mom works as my substitute teacher in school, we should all pitch in and help out. Vicky, make my lunch. Make your lunch. <laughs> On the double, please. On the double, please. <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Oh, hi, hon. Oh, thanks for doing this, honey. It's sure a big help when I'm working. Hey, it's no problem. Yeah, and tonight I'm even going to make dinner, honey. We're going to have goulash a la Ted. <laughs> I hope it clogs your microchips. <laughs> so have you thought of a story yet for the journalism contest, Jamie? No. But I'd sure like to win and become a reporter on the school newspaper. Well, Jamie, you see, the trick is, is to write a story that is so interesting that it'll make people sit up and take notice. How's this for a headline? Boy reveals secret of robot sister. Yeah, I got another headline for you. Father reveals secret of microwaving son. <laughs> <laughs> Enough, honey, you want some more? Uh, One lump or two. <laughs> Fine. Reggie, old buddy, when I win that journalism contest, I'm gonna be a big man on campus. Everybody will know who I am. Right, they know you're the fool who lost to me. <laughs> oh, good morning, Mrs. Lawson. Oh, good morning, Mr. Bryant. Well, what can I do for our illustrious principal? Well, first you can stop polishing the apple. <laughs> then I'd like for you to meet Chrissy Ryan. She's a new student who just moved here from Arizona. And she's going to be in your class. Oh, well, hi, Chrissy. Oh, we'll have her feeling right at home in no time. I'm sure you will. Listen, by the way, remind your students to get their stories into me by Friday if they plan on entering the journalism contest. Uh, okay, I'll do that. Okay. Chrissy, it's nice having you with us. Thank you, sir. Oh, your attention, class. I'm sure you already heard what your principal just said about the journalism contest, so let's keep that in mind, okay? And I'd also like you to say hi to your new classmate, uh, Chrissy Ryan. Hi, hi. hi. Well, who would like to show Chrissy where we are in the history book? <laughs> Thank you, fellas. Uh, Vicki, why don't you show Chrissy where we are? Right there. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Jamie, her brother. And this is Reggie. I'm not her brother. I'm just a brother. <laughs> if we can do anything in any way to help, just ask. Well, I didn't bring my lunch today, so you could show me where the cafeteria is. Oh, sure, no problem. You see, you go out the doors, you point your nose down the hall, you keep sniffing, and when you start to feel sick, you're there. <laughs> that covers the homework assignments for this week. Tomorrow we start the chapter on the Civil War. Now, how are you doing, Chrissy? Fine, Mrs. Lawson. I really appreciate you and Vicky going to all this trouble to help me. Oh, it's no trouble at all. I'm sure it'll be easy for me to catch up. I can speed read. Oh, that's wonderful. I can speed read, too. New York was the first settled by the Dutch in 1625. Oh, Vicky's such a little clown. Uh, well, Chrissy, as long as you're here, would you like to stay for dinner? Oh, I'd like that. Thank you. Oh, sure. Well, why don't you call your mom and see if it's okay? Uh, well, the phone is right over there. Oh, well, my mom doesn't live with us, but I can call my dad and ask him. Okay, well, you do that. We're having a special treat tonight. Goulash a la tête. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, uh, oh, where did you get that apron? Is it too busy with the shirt? <laughs> Need any help? You kidding, honey? You're talking to Julia Child with hairy legs. Uh, well, we may have one more for dinner if Chrissy can stay. I understand, Daddy. I'll tell Mrs. Lawson. 
Bye. I can't stay for dinner, Vicky. Please tell your mommy Daddy wants me to come home right away, okay? Okay. I'm really not very hungry anyway. My stomach's kind of upset from that sandwich in the cafeteria. They had to put saddles on those hamburgers. They've got to be made with horse meat. <laughs> horse meat. <laughs> You're funny. Bye. Bye. Hi. 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 Hey, guys. How's it going, huh? Terrible. Neither one of us has a chance to win the journalism contest at this rate. Why not? We can't find any good stories. Yeah. The best I can come up with is Bobby Herbeck got his first pimple. I couldn't even say where. <laughs> well, hang in there, guys. Why don't you guys team up, you know, like Woodward and Bernstein? <laughs> you know, and then just go after one good story, right? Well, who's Woodward and Bernstein? Uh, well, I guess you're too young to remember, but a few years back, there were a couple of reporters that uncovered this big scandal in Washington about Watergate and President Nixon. You're kidding. Norm Nixon, the basketball player, was president? <laughs> no, Reggie, you know she means the other Nixon. But he dribbled just as much, didn't he? Well, how did they get the story? From a secret source who gave them all the information. They never said who it was. You see, Jamie, a good reporter always protects his source's identity. They just gave him a secret code name. Deep Throat. Hey, that's a great idea, Reggie. You want to team up? I'll be Woodward. Okay, but I'm not sure I'm right for Bernstein. <laughs> hey, Reg, you want to stay for dinner? Sure, thanks. Great, I'm cooking. I just remember my mom needs me. <laughs> Boy, you really know how to kick a guy in the shins, don't you, Reg? Yeah. Yeah. Mmm, <laughs> smell it. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Reggie, my dad's cooking can't be any worse than the food in the cafeteria. Yeah. They serve horse meat in the cafeteria. Huh? They serve horse meat in the cafeteria. They should put saddles on those hamburgers. <laughs> hey! Wait a minute! I think we found our big story, Bernstein. Yeah, but how we know it's true? And Vicky says it's true. It's true. She never lies. She can't lie. She's not built that way. <laughs> well, okay. Boy, when we turn our paper into the principal tomorrow, he's gonna pat us on the back and say, Way to go, guys! Well, what if he asks us where we got our information? Well, just tell him we got it from our secret source. Deep tonsils. <laughs> Ms. Lawson, I'd like to talk to your class for a moment, if I may, please. Certainly, Mr. Bryant. Uh, class, your principal would like to have a word with you. Class? Knock it off! <laughs> That's better. They're all yours, Mr. Bryant. Thank you. I just read this entry into the journalism contest. It was written by Jamie Woodward Lawson and Reggie Bernstein Williams. <laughs> And according to your report, gentlemen, you say that horse meat is being served in the school cafeteria. <laughs> no, that's a very serious accusation. Now, I want to know where you got your information from. Uh, Mr. Bryant, sir, all I can say is that my partner and I got our information from deep tonsils. <laughs> deep tonsils? Yes. You see, a good reporter never reveals the name of his source. Right, Bernstein? Right, Woodward. I see. Well, uh, well, let me put it to you this way. If you don't tell me who gave you that story, the both of you will be washing dishes in the cafeteria for a month. She's deep tonsils. <laughs> well, I'm too young to have dishpan hands. Vicky, <laughs> why would you say such a thing? I said such a thing because Chrissy said such a thing to me. Well, Chrissy, why did you say a thing like that? Mrs. Lawson, it was just a joke. You know, because the hamburger was so tough. <laughs> so, without any proof whatsoever, without checking your facts, 
you go ahead and write a story that could have been harmful and embarrassing to the people that work in our cafeteria. Ms. Lawson, I will leave it to you to decide on a suitable punishment for this kind of uh, irresponsibility. I'll do that. I think I know just the thing. Well, now, since you two are such big fans of Woodward and Bernstein, I'm assigning you to read a book that they wrote. It's called All the President's Men, and I want you to do a report on it over the weekend. Oh, it shouldn't take you too long. I think it's only 900 pages. Way to go, guys. <laughs> Mr. Thoughtful just thought he'd do the laundry, huh? Doesn't it look great? I even uh, threw in one of Vicky's sweaters. <laughs> hey, you don't have to thank me, hon. I won't. Before you shrank it, that was my sweater. <laughs> and it was white. <laughs> Sorry, hon. Guess I better wait till she cools off before I uh, tell her about her pants. <laughs> Oh, hi, you guys. Hey, I'm a little surprised at you. Your uh, mother told me about the horse meat scandal. Well, you're the one who told us to be Woodward and Bernstein and Deep <laughs> Oh, no! My favorite shirt! about getting Jamie in trouble at school today. I just came by to apologize. Is he here? He will be soon. I'm fixing him a snack. Milk, any peanut butter and sardine sandwich. <laughs> Yuck. I'd rather have horse meat. <laughs> Come on in. What's the matter, Vicky? This is your picture on the milk carton. What? This is your picture on the milk carton. You're a missing child. No, I'm not. I'm right here. You may be right here, but you're missing. Oh, no. That is me. Why am I in a milk carton? I don't understand. I better go home and ask my dad about this. Goofed. Instead of being heroes at school, we're a couple of ding-dongs. Yeah. The only way we can get our self-respect back is to come up with a really big story that we can prove is true. Yeah, but where are we going to get it? That thing with Krista today made us look like we couldn't find a good story if it was right under our nose. <laughs> Krista just came to apologize, but she left and went home. Why didn't she wait? She saw her picture on that milk carton. Huh? She's a missing child. Wow! That is Chrissy. Yeah. I think we found our big story, Bernstein. I mean, if this doesn't win the journalism contest, nothing will. Let's go write it up. And we know it's true, because we got the proof right here on the milk carton. Man, you know what this is going to make us? A couple of ding-dongs. <laughs> Where is that guy? Great, there he is. Chicken heaven, would you shh with the <laughs> You got your wings, your legs, your thighs, your breast. I threw in a couple of lips. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Here, Vicky, take the chicken out, put it on a platter. On a platter? Yeah. Yeah. You're probably wondering why I'm whispering. You want the wife to think you cooked the chicken. All the guys do that. <gasps> Rots a rock. Forgot! Oh, listen. Listen, help me get rid of the evidence, will you? Sure. Oh, thanks a lot. Here. We got this and, uh... Yeah. This. Thanks a lot. Uh, what do I owe you? 
20 bucks. 20 bucks? <laughs> it says 15 bucks. What's the other five bucks for? Blackmail. <laughs> gotcha, big guy. There you go. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, by the way, the apron? It's too busy with the shirt. Big <laughs> It's, uh, it's a chicken a la Ted. Why are you whispering? He wants to wife to think he cooked the chicken. <laughs> Ted? All the guys do it. <laughs> Ted, really? I mean, do you really think that I wouldn't have known? I mean, that takeout chicken is so tasteless and soggy and greasy. Your cooking isn't that good. <laughs> Mom, Dad, when you hear this, Reggie and I found the story that's going to win us that journalism contest. Well, great. What's the story? It's all about Chrissy, that new girl in class. We found out she's a missing child. A missing child? That's right. I think I smell horse meat. <laughs> no, Dad, honest. This time we can prove it. See? Look. There she is. Carlos Ramirez, age three and a half. <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh, well, I, uh, I guess I gave that to the chicken man with the uh, rest of the evidence. Uh, sorry, Jane. <laughs> Ted, this is dreadful if Jamie's right. Yeah, we better check this out, honey. Listen, you guys write that story and give it to the principal so he'll be aware of the problem, okay? We will. He's got to believe the story this big. Wraps her up. <laughs> <Would you t> <laughs> I left it on his desk. I hope he believes us this time. If he doesn't, how are we going to prove it to him without the milk carton? Hey, our proof sits right in front of me. Chrissy herself. Hey, I thought of that too. Oh, yeah? Then why didn't you say so? Oh, I want to give you a chance to look smart for a change. <laughs> hey, where's Chrissy? Uh, don't worry about it. The bell hasn't even rung yet. We can worry. <laughs> if Chrissy doesn't show up, we're up the creek. This is Lawson. I'd like to see Reggie and Jamie, if I may. Well, of course, Mr. Bryant. Is uh, something wrong? We'll soon find out. Reggie and Jamie, would you step out in the hallway, please? You're up the creek. <laughs> Everyone, uh, read chapter six, please. Now, once again, gentlemen, you've written a very serious story here. I hope you have some proof. Mr. Bryan, I know what that story's about, and, and my husband and I believe the boys this time. Well, I can understand that, but I still need some proof before I can accept it. Excuse me. Dad! Honey, what are you doing here? Well, I, uh, I thought the boys might need me. I, I have some important information about their story. I called that telephone number listed on the milk carton, and they informed me that Chrissy Ryan was abducted by her father after a child custody battle. Oh, no. Hey, Mr. Ryan, there's our proof. And apparently her mother has been going out of her mind to try to find her. So I notified the police, and I also went to almost every market in town to try to find her. this. That's Chrissy Ryan, all right. It sure is. Way to go, Mr. Lawson. You've got it here. Hey, my dad's got it all over. I'm worried. Chrissy wasn't in class this morning. Well, I'm not surprised, honey. The police went to her house and found it vacant. So apparently her father is panicked and they're on the move again. Oh, that's beautiful, honey. Come on, guys, cheer up. I mean, after all, you two did win the journalism contest with your story. Yeah, I know. But I feel so bad about Chrissy. Yeah, me too. Now, you guys are going to feel a lot better when you bury your face in a big piece of that cake, huh? I doubt it. Hello? Hey, this is Ted Lawson. Yes? That's great news. Thank you very much for calling. Terrific news, everyone. The police found Chrissy and her father, and she's going to be reunited with Mom. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, you feel better, guys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I feel like burying my face in a piece of cake. You got it? 
You made